What's up everyone, I'm Chirag and welcome to part 11 of the tutorial series on AWS HTTP API Gateway. So guys, in this tutorial, I'm going to take you through on how we can enable IAM authorization within HTTP API Gateway and we will also see that how we can secure the API endpoint using the same. So let's get started. So before we dive into the practical implementation, let's try to understand this question. So why do we always see the option for authorization or section for authorization and not for authentication within any API or any API testing tool that we use like Postman? So here I would like to shed some light on authorization versus authentication. So let's try to understand it with an example. So let's say you are renting a car and to rent a car, you need to provide the identity proof and the down payment as a part of the formality. And once that formality is done, you are authenticated to enter into that car. So that's basically authentication. Now, once we are authenticated, you are authorized to drive that car and you can use the functionality of the car, but you are not authorized to modify that car or you cannot resale the car because you are not authorized to do that. So that's basically authorization. So, so authentication is like entering into someone's home, you know, and authorization is like what you can do and what you cannot do in their home. So for example, if you visit someone's home, you are authorized to sit in the living room, you can use the washroom, but you are not authorized to go into the bedroom, right? Because it's personal, because you are not authorized to do that in someone else's home. So that's basically the uh, idea behind authentication and the authorization. So now if we talk in terms of API, then we already have the invocation URL or the address of the resource that we want to access. And once we have that invocation URL or the address of the backend functionality, all we do is we try to invoke that API endpoint or the invocation URL. And once you try to invoke that API endpoint, what API will do is it will check whether you are authorized to access that resource or the backend functionality or not. So that's the reason we see authorization in terms of API rather than the authentication. So however, authentication will anyways happen as a part of the first step. So let's say, for example, you're trying to invoke the API endpoint using some basic authentication like username and password, or you're trying to invoke the API endpoint using some other authentication method like OR 2.0 or something like that. So what will happen once you try to invoke that API endpoint using that authentication method, right? So the very first step or the very first thing that API will do is it will check whether the credentials you are passing are correct or not. So if the credentials are valid, then you will be able to access that resource or you will be able to invoke that API endpoint successfully. And if that credential are incorrect, then you would not be able to access that resources, right? So that's basically authentication. So within API, authentication is anyways happening as a first step and then uh, we have the authorization. So I hope I was able to explain between authentication and authorization in terms of API endpoint. So now we will get started with the IAM authorization within HTTP API. So guys, let's get started. So the very first thing that we need to do is open the HTTP API. So in my case, it's HTTP API itself. And once you are there, you need to click on routes. And once you are within routes, you need to decide which method you want to authenticate so which method of which resource you want to authenticate because it is not like we can authenticate every method or every resource in a single configuration so you need to explicitly select so for example i want to authenticate this get method of this slash test resource then i need to select that and then i need to say attach authorization and similarly you need to do for each and every method of the resource which you want to authenticate Right, so for this tutorial, we are going to authenticate or enable IAM authentication for the get method under slash test resource. So I'm going to select that and I will say attach authorization. And once you are there, you need to select the existing authorizer from this drop down saying IAM, which is built in. And once you select that, you need to click on attach authorizer. Now here we have did the configuration and if you want to deploy it to the manual stage, then you need to say deploy and select the manual stage that is version one in my case and we will say deploy to stage. Now it was a very simple step to enable IAM authorizer. Now let's go to stages and try to invoke this API endpoint. So I'm going to copy this invocation URL and I will paste it over here. I will use version one stage followed by the test resource. And the method is get and we will simply say send. 
So now as you can see it written status code 403 that is forbidden and the message as forbidden. So when we use IAM authentication we need to sign in or authenticate this request with signature version 4 signing process. So to do that we will go back to the console, click on services, navigate to IAM management console and once you are there click on users from the left panel. So here we are going to create a new user. So we will say add user, give the username, I will say test and we want to provide the programmatic access. So to sign in the request with a signature version 4, we will require access key and secret key. So that's the reason we will give or provide the programmatic access and we will say next permission. So here it's a good idea to use a group for the permission but for the purpose of this tutorial we will attach existing policy directly. So here what we want is we want API invoke. So we want to attach Amazon API gateway invoke full access. So this will provide the invocation rights to this user and say next tags add a tag if you want say next review and finally click on create user. Now once the user is created, it will prompt for the access key ID and the secret access key. So you need to download .csv file, which will contain basically the secret key and the access key. So now I'm going to open this CSV file. So let me quickly pull that in. So here what we have, uh, here we have the access key and the secret key. Apart from that, we have username, password and the login link. So this is the access key and secret key that we are going to use to sign in the request with AWS signatures. So now to sign in the request, we will go back to Postman, click on authorization over here. From the drop down, say AWS signatures and it will ask for the access key and the secret key. So I'm going to copy this access key, copy, paste, and then I will copy and paste the secret key over here. And finally, it's asking for the AWS region for the advanced configuration. So we will say US is one and the service name is execute hyphen API. And I think now we are good to reinvoke this API endpoint. So let's say send. And as you can see, it returned the status code 200 and the response message that is get method invoked. So basically a successful authenticated request returns a 200 OK response code and an unauthorized request as we just saw it basically return the status code 403 which is forbidden response code. Right so this is how you can use IAM authentication to access the API endpoint and this is how you can limit the access to certain users. And another thing I want you to take note is that uh, unlike REST API, resource policies are not supported for the HTTP APIs at this point of time, but resource policies are supported within REST API. So basically this is how you can use IAM authentication. Unlike in real scenario, you will be using some SDK, right? So guys, uh, that's all I wanted to cover in this tutorial. Until that time, if you want me to do tutorial on any use case or service, then please leave them below and I will try my best to come up with the tutorial as soon as possible. And if you have any queries or comments, then again, please leave them below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time.